thing that I always like to emphasize is that repair is real and we are resilient human beings. And so we, um, at any stage of development, from pregnancy on through adulthood, we can repair traumas no matter how long ago they occurred. Um, and that that's the amazing ability of our brain and our body systems to do that. So there's never lost hope. <laughs> um, and pre and perinatal psychology actually has a therapeutic side of it where um, there is a whole practice working with adults to help resolve and repair traumas that occurred during the pre and perinatal period, um, looking at how adaptive patterns and personality traits have developed as a result of these coping mechanisms that were useful and essential at an early age, but no longer serve us. So one thing that a mother can do or a parent can do when there is trauma or challenge or adversity during pregnancy is to differentiate for the baby verbally um, what's happening. Um, and so what that looks like is, let's say the mother is um, really upset. She just got some bad news and she is upset. Um, of course, the baby in utero is being saturated in the mother's emotions and is experiencing them. Um, and one thing that we know is that there's often difficulty in separating self from other during pregnancy since the mother and the baby are so united in that incredible prenatal bond. Um, and so for the mother to just simply say, I'm experiencing this, this is what happened, I'm the adult, I will take care of it, I understand that you are um, feeling or you are, that these emotions are obvious to you as well, but I will take care of it and owning it um, and differentiating what's hers and what's the baby's. That can be extremely um, effective. Holly, I'm wondering if you can specifically address um, birth trauma and perhaps when the baby is separated from um, the mother or father or parents at birth um, due to medical complications or other reasons and um, to address those concerns of mothers who've had those experiences and feel that somehow the bond has been broken. So birth trauma can mean a lot of different things. Um, and I often find it helpful just to define what what we are talking about when we mention birth trauma. And that's, uh, I consider birth trauma the experience of threat of death or injury that involves a fear, horror, or helplessness during childbirth that can create psychological, emotional, physical, or spiritual injury. Um, so sometimes it can be as simple as someone saying something in the room that can be traumatic for the mother or for the baby. Um, and what you're mentioning in there's a separation, the baby is taken away from the mother and there's the trauma of separation. Um, and what can a mother do in that situation is afterwards, um, when she is reunited with the baby, she can explain why it was necessary for the baby to be removed from her. Um, she can slow down and really take the time to connect with the baby, being present with her child, um, talk to her. And then one of the most effective things of all is to have skin, skin to skin contact. Um, because so much of a child's brain is developing relationally, um, the child's right brain will attune to the mother's right, right brain. And when the baby is put on the mother's skin, the baby's heart rate, breathing, and brain will sink um, to the mother's. And that in and of itself can be extremely um, healing. And so that, uh, that bond isn't um, damaged between the mother and baby when that happens. 
I think it's important for us in in the world that we're living in today to trust in the strength and the endurance and the resiliency of the mother child bond. Um, it, it's it's stronger than we think, and it's capable of having fractures and having separations and having um, all these kinds of challenges. And that bond, when the mother has had a pregnancy where she's been talking to her baby, connecting with her baby, singing to her baby, um, taking time just to slow down and and be present with her baby in utero, and then the birth doesn't go the way that she had hoped, the baby gets separated, that bond was already established. And it it is when the mother is given the chance to re- connect with her baby that we see the resiliency come to life. What pre and perinatal psychology has taught us is that this early period of pregnancy through the first year is extremely um, important. It is delicate. It is a time when not only is the brain of a fetus and child developing, but it's actually organizing. The brain is actually getting organized and how it's going to structure itself for the rest of the child's life. Um, with all of that, um, we also have this understanding that we are resilient and we will create coping mechanisms for challenges and we will overcome them. Um, and the hope is that the coping mechanisms that we create for a challenge in the moment can get repaired and that the challenge can get repaired and attunement and bonding can get reestablished between the mother and the baby so that um, set patterns are not uh, created. I have one more track with Holly and it begins with Winnicott as well. Um, just another little extract from him, from his talk, Getting to Know Your Baby. Let's consider just what it is that the ordinary healthy-minded mother knows about her baby that is so vitally important, and yet which is apt to be forgotten by those who only look on. I think the most important thing is that you easily feel that your baby is worth getting to know as a person, and worth getting to know from the earliest possible moment. No one who comes along to give you advice will ever know this as well as you know it yourself. Even in the womb, your baby is a human being, unlike any other human being, and by the time he's born, he will have had quite a lot of experience, unpleasant as well as pleasant. It is, of course, easy to read into the face of newborn babies things that are not there, though to be sure a baby may look very wise at times, even philosophical. But if I were you, I shouldn't wait until the psychologists have decided how human a baby is at birth. I should just go right ahead and get to know the little boy or girl and let him get to know you. Well, um, I think the number one way is to acknowledge that babies in utero are conscious. Um, they're aware beings um, and that they can understand and respond to communications, emotions, and, sin and signals from the mother, from the father. Um, I think an another powerful tool is to just slow down and to understand that babies in utero and after they're born are operating at a slower pace than what we are typically operating. And so if we can slow down, create the space in our life to listen, to connect, to talk with babies, to um, really create space for them in our lives, then bonding flourishes. I think that whatever comes authentically to the parent is the right thing to do. Some people won't feel drawn to singing or playing music. Others won't feel con um, like meditating or 
um, but whatever way works to really tune into the baby, um, create space in your daily life as a mother, as a pregnant woman, to create that connection, to establish that bond, to listen, um, listen with the heart, listen with the mind, to feel and connect to your baby, that is those are things that are going to create and strengthen the bond. Prenatal attachment, prenatal bonding has been studied for decades now. And there's all different ways to create that secure attachment, that secure connection with the baby in utero. And I think the best way to do it is whatever feels authentic to the, to the mother and to the parents. And you've mentioned seeing the baby as a conscious being so in their engagements with their uh, newborn baby what does that actually look like um it looks like actually talking to the baby instead of just picking the baby up and sit and taking the baby over to the changing table and changing the baby's diaper actually talking to the baby and telling the baby what you're doing when you're doing it giving the baby a chance to participate in the activities and the decision making watching for cues of um not only verbal cues but um body cues and noticing how the baby is responding um and giving space for the baby to actively participate um while also taking responsibility for your own actions and naming them for your baby. This is what I'm doing. This is mine. I'm holding this as my responsibility. You don't have to worry about this or when a misattunement happens or um, a disruption happens, being able to say, oh, I made a mistake. I didn't realize and communicating your role. All of those things are excellent tools for for enhancing the bonding that's already natural. I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Pregnancy, Birth and Beyond. I want to thank our guest, Dr. Holly Goldberg. You can connect with Holly at her website, floweressenceapothecary.com. Tune in next week for more information and inspiration, bringing us full circle. You can find our show on iTunes, Spreaker, the usual social media, under Pregnancy, Birth and Beyond, our website at pbbmedia.org.